What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at result builders in Swift, what they are and how to use them. If that sounds good, drop a like down below, smash that subscribe button while you're at it, and let's get into it. So result builders are a fairly new concept that we're going to explore in Playgrounds. So go ahead and open up Xcode, and I'm going to come up here and go to File, New, Create a Playground, and we're just going to be taking a look at the basics of what they are before we expand in later videos and how to use them you know more intelligently so uh, we're gonna go ahead and call this uh, builders just like that toss it wherever you want I'll save it to my desktop and let me go ahead and expand our Xcode window here and jump into it so the concept of a builder actually you might have seen before it's the same concept that Apple uses all uh, throughout Swift UI where you have something like a view builder but instead of going into the weeds of Swift UI since you might not be familiar let's take a basic example so let's say I have a function that says uh, create string array and let's say this takes in you know uh, particular strings so we'll say underscore strings takes in these strings and returns an array of strings now bear with me seems a little simple at this point which in fact it is and of course it would just return the inbound parameter now what if we wanted to do some type of transformation on the inbound string array this guy in other words let's say we wanted to combine all these strings into a single string and return that so let's say maybe we can say joined uh, and we're going to join it with a comma separator and return that so this definitely works however this functionality is not very reusable so we're going to explore uh, builders and particularly take a look at building a custom string builder so how do you declare a builder? So we're going to create a struct here. The struct, I'm going to go ahead and call it a string builder. And you need to annotate the struct with a property wrapper called result builder, super creative. And that's going to force you to bring in a protocol called make uh, or conform to a protocol that is uh, make block, I believe. If I'm looking for the correct thing, let me go ahead and hit this. We'll hit fix and it's going to bring it on in for us. Build block is what I'm looking for. Now build block, we can change the signature of this, but essentially this is going to take in a variadic component. Variadic just means we have these three dots here we can take in multiple of them so very similar to an array and in here we can generically define the transformation that we're going to have if we're going to have one on these you know uh, multiple strings coming in and declare what the return type might be so maybe we'll try to convert all of these to a single integer and add them all up and return a final number for now we're going to keep it simple and i'm going to keep this as a string array and inside of here all we really want to go ahead and return is components because components already is a type of array you could think of it as since it's a variadic string and we're just going to return that as the array of strings now let's uh, take it one step further how do we actually use the string builder thing that we put together so i'm going to add a function here and this is going to be called combine we can also go ahead and call it build now it's going to take in a string builder uh, property wrapper which is what we've declared notice we have that at symbol before it and we need to actually give it a, a parameter name so i'm going to say content and it's going to be a closure that returns a array of strings just like that and this whole function is going to also return a array of strings and finally in this guy we can invoke the content closure and again if you've if you've used swift ui or gone deep into view builders this pattern might look very familiar if not stick with it so now let's go ahead and say a long string and we can go ahead and assign this to build and inside of here we can say hello world super long and notice we don't have commas in here and let's make sure it's the compiler won't yell at us and what i'm going to go ahead and do here is we're going to say print uh, long string and what you'll see is in the console here we're going to get an array of all these strings but notice that we didn't actually put commas here the result builder that we have declared up here is what's taking you know all these inputs as variadic parameters and stitching them into an array now this is useful it's kind of interesting but now hopefully 
hopefully you guys get a little bit of a glimpse of why this is powerful. So let's take it a step further. So let's say this result builder uh, now takes all of these strings and we want to combine it into a single string. And this is similar in SwiftUI when you have multiple views in a view builder and SwiftUI basically collapses them to a single built view. So we're going to say components, go ahead and join them with a separator of a space and a comma. And respectively, don't forget that you have to change your signature here to be a string and the return type is a string as well. And let's see, everything should be building now. Let's go ahead and hit pause at the bottom here. I'll clear my console with the command K. Gonna go ahead and hit play. And now you'll notice, looks like my spacing is a little off, but uh, point being, we've now taken this array of variadic strings that we are passing in, and we've collapsed it to a single uh, string where we have separated each of the components with a comma. So let's take it even further. So let's, instead of making this a string, let's make it a number, particularly an integer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to convert each of these components to a number and then add them to a final uh, you know, figure, a final sum. So let's go ahead and change the return type here. All right, and maybe we'll even change the string builder. I'll go ahead and say string uh, add builder. And maybe this is gonna go ahead and add all the numbers, make sure you change it here. And how do we actually compute this now? Well, the first thing that we wanna do is go ahead and try to you know, compact map these components uh, into numbers, right? We might be passing in strings that are not integers, and if we you know, have those, we wanna ignore them more or less. So we're gonna say, go ahead and convert $0, which is each of the components, into a uh, number. And now you could do a uh, reduce on here to reduce uh, into a final result. Uh, where you know you're gonna start a zero and increment each time, but just for readability's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a simple for loop here. So we're gonna go ahead and say var sum zero and numbers for each. And in here we're gonna go ahead and say sum plus equal dollar zero. And finally here we can return said sum. So let's go ahead and call this sum here. All right, that's sum. And we'll put some here as well. And notice we're gonna go ahead and give this a run without actually changing the strings. Let's make sure everything is looking all right. So let's see why this is complaining here. We're taking in an array of strings, taking in here a, this should return a integer as well, this closure. Make sure you fix your types. Pretty easy to miss sometimes. Let's go ahead and give this a run and let's see what we get as an output. Now what I expect to see is a zero because all the strings that we're passing in are not uh, you know, integers. When we do the compact map in the builder here, it's gonna say that you know we don't have actual numbers in the strings and then there's nothing to do a for loop off of. But let's go ahead and change these to actual values to get a little more interesting. Put in something big in there and maybe let's go with, uh, I don't know, let's go with nine, why not? And let's go ahead and hit Command K to clear. We'll pause, give it a run once more, and we should see the sum of these numbers and these strings uh, provided to us down below. So pretty cool. So this is hopefully a good intro and primer to result builders. Let me touch on one more use case that I can think of at the top of my head uh, that I've used this for before previously in other projects. So whenever you have redundant tasks, where you find that you're duplicating code with very minor changes, result builders are often a really good way to go about, you know, uh, simplifying your code and genericizing it. So if you think about making an API call, you generally need to create, you know, a API call request every time. So let's say we want to pass in, you know, URL query parameters to our URL request. So I could go ahead and say API uh, argument builder and this is a simple example but hopefully it'll paint the picture for all of you and we're going to put that there and the inbound variadic parameter that we're going to have here uh, is simply going to be a dictionary with string and string and we're going to return a url request and let's see let's make sure i can find it url request yep this guy right here and essentially what we want to do inside of here is we're going to go ahead and instantiate a request, which is pretty simple. It'll be a URL request like that. And we're going to want to return said request here. And in the middle here, the thing that's interesting we can do is if, you know, our components aren't empty, which we can even honestly ignore that check, we're going to do a for 
dictionary in components and we're gonna create a argument. So I'm gonna say an arg is a URL uh, query item which takes a value and a name. And we can go ahead and say the name is going to be $0.key. And this guy, so instead of $0, we can say dictionary.key. So we'll say dictionary.first.key. And this is gonna be dictionary.first dot value just like that now these are going to give us optionals so you could go ahead and just for the sake of this example just force unwrap everything to make sure it plays nicely let's make sure we don't have an error on that line if we do we'll go ahead and take care of it let's see why this is yelling looks like we need to unwrap the key and the value as well looking pretty good all right so now that we've got this uh, arguments here we can go ahead and start adding it into an aggregate so here we're getting uh, ns url query item so i'm just going to go ahead and say items is going to be an array of ns url query items and then once we've created this here we can say items append arg and at the very bottom here we can say request dot and there should be a query item on here. Let's see if we have any weird errors that it's yelling at us about. Looks like up here, it probably wants a URL. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a URL. I'm just gonna leave it empty to basically show my example. And here we're gonna go ahead and say request dot. Let's see if autocomplete decides to play nice. There should be a query items in here. If I can go ahead and find it, so there's hash value. HTTP method, what we're looking for is the query items. Uh, what we're looking for actually is the HTTP body. So the body, we're gonna actually use these query items and convert this into the body. You can optionally also, you know, you can optionally also include these query items as a part of the URL where URLs are, you know, some uh, domain, and then you have your key and value. Anyways, I digress. I'm gonna print out these items here so you guys get a you know gist of what I'm getting at. We're gonna also put this up here so that print can reference it. And essentially, you can genericize creation of a request by using this new builder. And later on, we can actually even go further and extend this to take in you know, a URL, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and put that there. So API argument builder, it's going to return to us a URL request. The sky was gonna be a URL request as well. We're just invoking the closure here. And here we need to pass in a dictionary. So maybe I'll say key is going to be hello world. Maybe we'll have a filter. This is gonna to be top results, et cetera, et cetera. And hopefully you guys get the points. So if I go ahead and uh, run this now, let's make sure this isn't yelling at us. Let's see why it is. So it's saying, can I convert value of type string to expected type of string uh, key and value? Ah, this should be a semicolon or a colon, I should say, because this is a dictionary, not an array. If you go ahead and give it a pause and a run, you're gonna see a URL request printed down here, but the thing that we're gonna focus on is this will be printing out uh, our items here. So it looks like it's not printing it out because it's in a results builder. It's unexpectedly found nil once we started to pass in uh, to our dictionary, which is not good because I probably made a typo here, but I'm gonna digress and <laughs> leave it here. Hopefully you guys get the point. Uh, what you want to do is actually enumerate over the components, and that would basically allow you to get the you know dictionary keys and values and populate your array here properly. I just uh, I just goofed on this and didn't do it quite right. But that is all I've got for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think of result builders in a nutshell. There are some really interesting GitHub projects uh, that I'm gonna share on this channel uh, that have used this to build things like dependency injection, to build you know HTML parsers, some pretty crazy ideas. But if you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below. Excuse all of my dictionary typos here. Subscribe to the channel if you're into iOS and Swift. And definitely don't hesitate to leave a comment if you have a video suggestion, if you want to roast me on my dictionary looping skills, or if you just want to say hi. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.